I'm Reed Corbett, a program head here at the Coastal Studies Institute and a professor at East Carolina University. We're currently in the process of installing a sill or a living shoreline here on our property to try and protect the property from shoreline erosion. Like many places across North Carolina, particularly within our estuarine environments, we're seeing shoreline erosion more and more at higher rates than we've seen in the past. And we're looking at new and innovative ways of trying to protect that shoreline. Many property owners use engineered, hardened engineered structures like seawalls or riprap, but those tend to alter the substrate, alter the habitat right near the shoreline. Not good for the fishery, not good for aquatic vegetation. And our shoreline has a lot of marsh, you know, this critical habitat that is important to the water quality, important to our fishery throughout the estuarine system. And so we're looking for new ways of protecting that shoreline while increasing the availability of habitat for fisheries and other types of species. So shorelines throughout the Admiral Pamlico estuarine system are eroding a lot of different rates. It turns out that the shoreline that we're protecting is eroding at a rate on the order of six to 10 feet per year. Some of the fastest erosion that we have on Roanoke Island. The rates of erosion are dependent on many different things. The type of shoreline that you have, the amount of open estuarine environment that you have, so the fetch and the wave energy that it's exposed to leads to different erosion rates. So the living shoreline that we're constructing is, is a sill. It's basically material that's being put just offshore in about three to four feet of water depth to reduce the wave energy before it hits the shoreline itself. The living shoreline that we're installing is actually a partnership between the Coastal Studies Institute and the Nature Conservancy. That piece of property is actually a conservation easement owned by the Nature Conservancy. And so we've always partnered anything that we do across that particular landscape. So we're basically building a sill that's out front of the marsh area. This will help to reduce wave energy and the material that we're using will hopefully attract oysters to it. It's calcium based and it will also start to facilitate other types of oyster reef type of things, which would basically bring in some of the flora and fauna that would be associated with a hard structure, uh, like a typical oyster reef. So that could be having different types of fish species. So the Nature Conservancy has gotten some funding to do some of these type of projects where we looked at shorelines that are erosing at fast rates and building some of these sills to see if we can reduce that erosion. Um, so this kind of just kind of goes hand in hand with the work that the Nature Conservancy does, which is protection and conservation easements and the research that we've done in the past with working with CSI. Having a project like this is looking at ways to reduce shoreline erosion, enhance water quality through oyster reef components, uh, and having the ability to do research during the beginning of this project all the way for, for a handful of years to be able to give informed decision within communities of how you could best do living shorelines or oyster reef sills and things like that to protect our wetlands, our marshes, that surround our communities. It's not that hardened engineered structure, it's a greener sort of version of protecting the shoreline. And what we want to do is make this more accessible to property owners. We want to make it more accessible from a permitting perspective, but also just from an understanding, right? So we need people to understand the importance that these shorelines play in that transition between water to upland to the terrestrial environment. And this habitat is critical. We need to protect it, but we need to protect it in a way that doesn't degrade the water quality or degrade the habitat along the shoreline itself.